little hard to explain exactly what relationship the Orchid Thief has to this film. Did you have a full understanding of exactly how non-linear and how much of a non-adaptation of your book this script was going to be? To put it mildly, um, first of all, thanks for having me here and thank you all. Um, this came about in a funny way. When I was writing the book, as it finished, as I was finishing the book, I was suddenly approached by a bunch of Hollywood people interested in adapting it. And I was mystified because as I was writing it, I thought, I'll tell you one thing, this is one piece of work of mine that will never be adapted for a film. It's not, it doesn't, it, you know, it's very interior in a lot of ways, it's nonlinear, it just seemed particularly unsuited for a movie. But producers were interested and I thought, fine, it's your problem figuring out how to do it. And I remember at the time saying to a friend, if they make this into a movie, there's no doubt that they'll add sex and drugs and car crashes. I mean, how could they not? It's Hollywood. Bingo, you got that. Yeah. Um, a long time transpired where nothing happened. I, I, you know, the producers had it and I didn't hear anything about it and I thought, I'm sure they're tearing their hair out. They said to me, oh, we've got this great young screenwriter, Charlie Kaufman, he just finished a movie called Killing John Malkovich. And, I, of course, that was the wrong title, but I thought Killing John Malkovich must be some one of these like Saw or Halloween, and I thought, I don't, I don't get it. Um, more time went by. The producers called me and said, We've got the script. Uh, I said, great, just throw it in the mail. I'd love to see it. And they said, well, no, 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 no. Let's go to lunch. <laughs> and I thought, all right, fine. So I met them at lunch. Um, and one of the producers, Ed Saxon, said, uh, let's have a cocktail for <laughs> lunch. And I said, well, normally I, you know, I don't drink at lunch. And he said, oh, come on. And I thought, well, all right. So we had a cocktail. And then he said, all right, let's order, and, and I'm going to get a nice bottle of wine. <laughs> and I thought, okay, well, all right, go at it, whatever. And, you know, then it was, let's have dessert. Do you want an after? You ever little, tried heroin? Uh, yeah, yeah. And finally I said, Ed, it's great being here. It's great lunch. I'm totally drunk, but can I have the script? Um, and he said to me, well, all right, look, before I give it to you, I just want to say one thing. Um, there are some people in it who are not in the book. <laughs> and, and I said, well, that's okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be casting the film. That's sort of your problem. And he said, and you will recognize some of them. And I said, okay. And he said, well, like you. <laughs> I didn't really think too much about it. I, he said, call me the minute you finish reading it. I went home, I started flipping through the script, and I thought, who is Charlie Kaufman? Isn't that the guy who wrote the movie? And, and then I continued flipping through until I got to the scene, I'll never forget this, where I appear on a porn site. And I thought, wait a minute, hang on a minute. I called the next day and I said, um, you know, I, I can't let you make this movie. <laughs> I said, I, it's going to ruin my career. If you really insist on making this film, you're going to have to change my name. And he said, why? And I said, because it's, it makes me look so bad. I mean, I'm, I'm sleeping with my subject. I'm a drug addict. I'm, and he said, well, Susan, look, look at Charlie. He's masturbating through the whole movie. Right? <laughs> you know, what's your problem? Anyway, this is a very long answer to your question, but it was, it was a very funny process because ultimately they felt that they couldn't make the movie if I didn't agree to let them use my real name because one of the basic and very fundamental conceits of the movie is that everyone in it is real. Uh, it's all, you know, all the film executives are the 
real people who worked on the film, and that it was very important that it all work that way. Why I finally agreed, I don't know. I just, at some point I thought, this is a guy who really wants to make this movie and make it something really special, and what the hell. Um, of course, the first time I went to see a screening of it, it was a rough cut, and I was absolutely, I should have taken Valium first. <laughs> but when I finished, when the film was over, I said to them, I'm from Cleveland, and I said, only one condition is that this never is shown in Ohio, <laughs> ever. The, my parents are not gonna get the irony here. But um, I don't see how you could have made a conventional film from the book. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of playing around and joking, but it was really scary to me to agree as a, you know, as a person who writes professionally. And I, I did have real concerns that people wouldn't understand what part of this was real and what wasn't. And at the same time, I felt that it was truer to the spirit of the book than a conventional film could have been. Um, so finally I thought, well, I think the people who know me will, and the people who are astute will understand that, of course I don't consort with my subjects. Of course, I mean, it was clearly the point at which the film becomes fiction. You know, I should hope that most people understand that, of course, it's, it's not real. Um, but it's been a really interesting experience, to say the least. I've had other movies made from things I've written, and none of them were quite like this. <laughs> One of the, the brilliant parts of the film, and almost unnerving to me, was that Charlie found, uh, sort of unearthed themes that were in the book that were not explicit. Um, and also one thing that was very strange to me was I wrote the book at a, a kind of a difficult time in my life, and I hadn't really grappled with the fact that it was difficult in terms of my marriage. And so when I first saw the, the um, script, I was really rattled. And I thought, how did he know that? I mean, I don't know him. I had never met him. How did he discern through reading this book that this was somebody going through something that was totally unrelated to the writing of the book. So in many ways, I felt like I learned things that I saw sort of qualities of the book emerge through the film that I, I hadn't really even sort of completely um, had a grip on myself. Um, and you talked about the script and obviously your shock at the script. Um, how early and, and was it, did it sort of ameliorate some of your fears when you found out Meryl, the great Meryl Streep was going to be playing you? Uh, absolutely. Uh, what was your first meeting with Charlie Kaufman like after having read the script? Oh my God. Well, it was actually very funny because, you know, I hadn't met him. We had had no contact. And I went out to L.A. to watch them <laughs> film a, a couple days just for fun. And I actually had a, a little cameo, although it ended up being cut, sadly. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I hadn't really thought Charlie would be out there because I didn't think screenwriters were on film sets. I was watching Nicolas Cage in a scene, and there's this little guy standing over there. I thought, oh, you know, some, you know, one of the script supervisors or something. And I didn't give him much thought. He was shy, retiring, and you know, little. And suddenly Nicolas Cage stops in the middle of the scene and he says, the real Charlie and the real Susan finally meet. And we look at each other. <laughs> and Charlie said, hi. And I said, I'm really embarrassed. He said, not as embarrassed as I am. And he turned around and left. And I, <laughs> I then didn't see him for, um, at least a year. 